motivate, inspire, uplift, bring out the good, the great out of each and every one of us. It's not about me. Nope, it's not about you, but it's about all of us growing together, supporting one another, lifting one another up, getting that shoulder to lean on, that hand to hold. We're in the midst of trouble, happiness, sad, all of it together. But you know what? But most of all, the number one key is keeping God in the forefront of our minds. So I'm here with your sister and your friend, Crystal Cross, with Mervin and Mayo. What's up? Hey, how's it going, Ms. Cross? Honor yes. to meet you. Honor to meet you. Yes, finally meeting you too. I've heard so much about you. I've heard, listen, your singing is amazing. Just wonderful. Thank you so much. I certainly appreciate it. <laughs> so welcome to The Morning Jam. Uh, the Morning Jam is a platform for positive influencers, motivators, uh, positive speakers, you know, minister, all of it. We, I do it all. So just welcome, mm -hmm. welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Good to be here. <laughs> so uh, let's get started here. So let's uh, let the people know here on the Morning Jam who Mar uh, Mervin Mayo is. Uh, well, I'm a Richmond police officer. Um, uh, 15 years, uh, 16 years. I got four more years and I'm retiring. Um, I'm a minister of music at Truth Ministries. Um, 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 uh, truth, well, not Truth Ministry, Baptist Truth Ministries, um, RVA. Um, I've been the Truth Minister of Music for the past two years, and I just, I love to sing. I love to praise the Lord, and that's that's just about it, really. That's about it. <laughs> so, um, so, um, so, Marvin, when you started singing, so where did it all begin in your in the um, singing business? Well, you know what? I actually, I actually used to rap. I used to rap back in the day. Oh wow! And um, yeah, and uh, we did a song. I forgot the name of the song, but anyway, my, so my <laughs> manager needed a hook. He was trying, about, trying to find somebody to sing a hook on the song. So I was like, man, I can sing the hook. He was like, no, I need somebody that can really sing it. So I was like, well, let me try it. And, uh, and then I sung it. And from that day forward, he was like, so you're no longer going to be rapping. You're going to be singing from now on. <laughs> and that's, not, that's how the singing started. And, um, and I used to sing R&B. But then I, um, I started singing at uh, 31st Street Baptist Church, 4th Baptist Church, and the children's choir. I think I was like 10 or 11 at the time. And mm -hmm. then it's my passion for singing gospel just – just develop from from that that point on. I still rap once in a while to when the kids in a, in the house and ask me to bust a rap, I bust it. I sound like crap, but hey, <laughs> rap. Listen, you sound like me with um, my son. I'm like, hey, I can spit a little. I call mine spit, so I can spit just a little bit for you. He's right. like, no, please don't do it. You don't do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I, I I love to embarrass my girls. I I, I I rap in front of all their friends and. They turn blood red. They'd be so tickled. <laughs> Dad, please go downstairs. Please go somewhere else. So. <laughs> That's awesome, though. I definitely love, look, we're on the same page here because I love it. Yeah. My son in front of his friends, too. Just being a little silly in front of them. <laughs> right, right. So, um, yeah. yeah, so we definitely have a little bit in common. Like you said, you uh, grew up singing at a young age. I definitely grew up singing and administering and at a young age, probably starting at the age of two. Um, I'm number 11 out of 12. Uh, it's 12 of us, Good seven number. girls and five boys. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome, though. They don't they don't do that no more. So that's awesome. Absolutely not. So do you have siblings at all? Yeah, I have a, a older brother, a younger sister, and a younger brother. So do you guys all sing? No, not at all. Um, with my dad, my dad, he just passed back last February. He, I mean, he actually sings really good. He, um, he sounds like one of the whispers. He, um, <laughs> my dad could really sing that. He never sung in a group or he never sung in church. He just sing around the house, but he was awesome. And my, uh, my son, my, I had a 23 year old son. He sings, but he's so, he sings so soft. He think he's Chris Brown. You know, he, <laughs> he likes singing soft and pretty for the girls. I'm like, well, you got to yeah. sing for the Lord. He said, I ain't, I ain't there yet, dad. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That is right. funny. That is funny. See, my son, he sings too, but he only sings like on the quiet side as well, like your son. He don't sing for the girls though. He kind of right, right, right. Quiet side at home singing. Right, gotcha. <laughs> so, um, so how long have you been in ministry? Because I know that you are you a minister as well. Are yeah, you? I'm a minister. Too. I'm actually a licensed ordained pastor, uh, or and uh, minister, licensed ordained minister. I preach at our truth ministries. Maybe I used to preach once twice a month but since COVID my uh the uh, pastor pastor uh pastor uh, Anthony um Franklin he's he's been doing all the preaching because it's it's strictly on virtual and I just I need some type of audience to feed me you know what I'm saying because I'm yeah. new to it so I need all the help I can get so uh but yeah I am I'm a licensed ordained minister uh, so how, how long have you been licensed I've been licensed maybe over a year maybe a year and a half something like that now 
Well, congratulations. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. But I've been ministering for a long time. I used to play, um, I played piano and organ at several different churches, but this particular, actually I had, I was, I had stopped going to church period um, for about a year, uh, except for like special engagements. But this particular church, uh, pa my pastor Anthony Franklin, who was also a police officer, he, um, I went over there to help him out a little bit until he could find a, um, a steady piano player. And I just fell in love with the, with the ministry. And I'm, I'm, you know, I never left God. I just left the church, you know, and yeah. I'm, but I'm back in the full fledged now, you know, under a different way. Cause we, I'm at truth ministry. So all that, all the, all those church games and all that, I don't play the, the play that stuff no more. We come there to praise the Lord and that's it. Yeah. You can keep all that other stuff out of there. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally yeah. understand that. So, um, so you talked about playing the keyboard. So what got you into playing the keyboard? Uh, well, you know, I started playing the keyboards in high school. Um, Carmen Ward was my choir teacher, and um, I used to stay back in the evenings. And uh, this guy named, named Jonathan Lilly, uh, you might know Harold Lilly. He's he just he's big into the uh, uh, music industry. His father um, was Jonathan Lilly, Lilly's uncle. He was the uh, the piano player for the gospel choir at Armstrong. And I was like, man, I want to learn how to do that. So I would sit and watch them play a couple keys, and the ones that were easy, that was just like all C majors or something like that. I will I will learn to play, and then eventually it just one day it just kicked in. I was like, man, I can, I can do this. And I've been playing ever since. Awesome. You so, know? so you have children. So you have, is it four, three? Four? Yeah, I have, I have three kids. I have a 23 year old, a 16 year old and a 13 year old. Awesome. My oldest they, is a boy. Do they all sing? My 16 year old, uh, she does not sing. She can sing. She's just really shy. She's going through that little phase where she's 16 yeah. and she just, you know, my 13 year old, she plays drums and she can, she can sing really good too. And then my son, he's 23, he can sing pretty good. But like I say, he, he wants to be uh Ralph Tresman or somebody. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Bless his heart though. He'll so, come around. So you're from Richmond, Virginia. That's awesome. Yes, um, I have family in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, my uncle part? is Bishop uh, Eugene Reeves. Oh, that sounds familiar. That's in Southside. Yes. I think that's the South Side. Okay, that sounds, I never met him, but I, I think I've heard the name though. That's awesome. Yes, that's my uncle. Uh, that's my that's mom's awesome. side of the family. So okay. yeah, I've been to Richmond, Virginia a couple of times. So I definitely, you know, know the area just a tad bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Richmond is awesome. Good good vacation spot. Come on out here and get some it of this good food. A, it is a great vacation spot. I do like yeah. to go there and visit and then come back home. I yeah. am a straight country girl, straight from Arkansas. Love oh, no. okay. I love Arkansas, but my home, my second home is Atlanta. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, you got like a, a major look on you when you saw Marvin uh, that song, he yeah. the Best in Me. So what? why did you pick that song? Well, I didn't. That song picked me. It, it, uh, that was that was my pastor. That was my pastor thing coming out just now. <laughs> yeah. um, you no, know, I um, you know, I, I, I usually, you know, I, like I said, I play on Sundays. So what I would do sometimes songs just just get stuck in my head, stuck in my head. I'm like, well, well, let me go to the church because the church is in Richmond too. So before I go home, um, I usually stop by the church and try to see what, what songs I'm going to do for Sunday. And that song just stuck in my head, and I just recorded it. And uh, my intentions were what I usually do is just record myself and and go home and listen to it. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I, I'm not, I shouldn't go up on that note or I need to go down or ah, I need to do this a little yeah. different. And uh, I actually saw a lot of imperfections in that video, but uh, I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna post it anyway. And uh, I woke up the next morning and had like over a million views. And I'm yes. like, yeah, I'm like, who, somebody done hacked my account. Somebody's playing on my account. Stop playing. I don't play with other people's children. Stop playing. But uh, it worked out. Yeah, so you're now, um, I know that you sung We Bow Down before you got, and I've actually kind of, the way you sung that song, listen, I'm a church girl, grew up in church. I've uh -huh. never heard the way you sung the song. So right. you actually, since March 26th, you've reached 3 million views on that, that song alone. Not the one, He Saw the Best in Me, but We right. Bow Down before you got. So how do you feel about that now that everybody's eyes are on Mervyn Mayo? How did you feel? Oh, that's, I mean, it's, it's awesome. I, I've been doing it for a long time, but I, 
I usually do. Well, you know what? I'm not going to say local, local, because I've sung a lot of places. I've sung with Ras Allen. I've sung with Shirley Caesar, uh, John P. Key, Ernest Pugh, like Yolanda Adams. I did stuff on a small scale, though, like opening. So they didn't know who I was. I was just that bald head guy singing, opening up for them. So <laughs> as far as like being like in the, in the scene like that, it's really no big deal. Um, but as far as that, the Bow Down song, uh, I had just... I had just actually wrote that song. As a matter of fact, I wrote it, but when I sung that song, I, I was changing the words at, at the moment to, to speak to the times that we're in now. Yeah. And, um, I was not expecting all of those views either, but uh, we just finished recording that last Tuesday. So I'm hoping by the end of August, we'll be able to put that one out. Because, well, uh, awesome. Everybody wants me to record the exact way I, I did it, but at the end part, it was like a little pad, a little bell twist to it. And you have to get yeah. copyrights. So I... It's almost the same up until it gets to the end. Then I do thing on it. So I'm looking forward to that one, too. Absolutely. So I know that uh, Rance Allen is a he. I'm a huge fan of Rance Allen. I love yeah. Rance Allen. So you've actually sung on stage with him. And I'm just, I'm, yes. just, I'm a little jealous about that. I'm just a little jealous. Yeah, 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 it happens. <laughs> it happens. You know, they said, uh. They said they needed somebody really good to sing with her aunt Alice. And I said, I'll go ahead on and accept that oh, challenge. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I probably would have said the same thing, too. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll be the one. Yeah, I'll go ahead on. I know, I know, I know. I'll go ahead on and, and, and take I'll make that sacrifice. Absolutely. I would have did the yes. same thing. Well, congratulations yes. on all the views and, and being able to be on stage with an amazing, amazing gospel artist. Congratulations to you. I want you to continue to be a blessing to all the people that you see and reach. It, I, I love it. I love it. Thank so you. I appreciate so, that. So uh, let's get into uh, being such an amazing cop. I watched a, a couple of your uh, videos of how you did um, your new single song. Um, uh huh. I need you, Lord. Yes. And that was a really great video. I love it. So a lot of people. I, I, I want to point out one thing, and a lot of people tend to i don't know because my heart goes out to the homeless as well so in your video uh -huh. you hand a guy on the side of the street money and uh -huh. i always i always do that especially when i'm driving out like hey here here but a lot of people in some states don't do that why do you feel right why do you feel that um you know a lot of people don't do it because they feel like the people are trying to get over. I mean, he, the time he's standing right there on the corner, he could go get a job. But there's a lot of mental. I work, I work in um at, at Richmond Community Hospital, and sometimes I work in the psych ward, uh, which they call the CTC. And um, man, I I see some people, some young people, and and they just look so normal. And then once they start speaking, you're like, my God, you know, this is yeah. real. You know, psychological issue um situations are real. And um, some people just, they just can't help it. You know, most people are not homeless because they want to be homeless. People don't want to stand on the corner and, 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 and ask for money to, to get something to eat. You know, that's not a, when, you, when yeah. you're a child, you'll say, hey, when I grow up, I want to be homeless. It's just something, it's a trigger. It's something that happens, you know, and, and they're human and people treat them so inhumane. Um, when I do see them, you know, I try my best. Now, I'm not, I can't give you my rent money. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. But, uh. If if I see you and I got it in my pocket, I'm gonna make sure that you're gonna eat. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, the, in the homeless, the homeless, it's it's real. You know, uh, we got a, a unit called the Hope Unit. I uh, forgot what it's called, but it's about it's about homeless trying to provide uh, care and trying to provide uh, uh, food and clothing and clean stuff. You know, for the homeless back here in Richmond. So the Richmond Police Department actually, we actually work 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 working on that now under the CAPS unit. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That actually was a really homeless. That guy was, he was homeless for real. People was like, hey, so who'd you get, who was the actor that you got to be homeless? I'm like, no, nah, man, that dude was sitting on the corner. That guy was oh, homeless. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, wow. and uh, we did it in one take. So, but I did ask him, I said, hey, man, do you mind if, um, if um, you know, we film it, we're doing a video, you know, I'm going to give you some money. Do you mind if I film it? He was like, that's fine. How many takes are we going to do it? Do I have to get the money back each time? I said, no, we're going to do it in one take. And you get to keep this money, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, we're not awesome. gonna keep doing it. <laughs> so. So, and that's amazing that you did the song in one take. I know that yeah. my sisters, we did a song and we had to retake. <laughs> really? So, so that's congratulations on that because that it, it takes really a profession to. Thank you. I appreciate take. that. So, like I said, we were talking about you being a uh, police officer in Richmond, Virginia. So, how has mm -hmm. that been here in this time of 2020 right now? 
Uh, well, you know, I'm a school resource officer. Uh, I'm a Richmond police officer, but I work in the schools. I work at a Richmond alternative school. That's a school where most, it's cool where, where the kids got kicked out of regular school. So it's an yeah. alternative school. A lot of people say, oh, you that with the bad kids. Bad kids. And I'm like, no, they just made bad decisions. They're yeah. not bad kids. Yeah. They just, Absolutely. That's where I am. However, since COVID, we haven't been in the school. And so since I'm a school resource officer and I'm not in the school, I'm expendable. So all all that I've been doing for the past 50 days is protests, protests. But when I come to work, I know that I'm going to work to protest. You know, at some points I'm like, I'd rather work a domestic call. I'd rather go to a DOA, you know, I'd rather get an accident. I'm just so sick of working to protest, you know, and that's just me because I'm doing it every day that I work. So it's been, um, it's been rough. It's been taxing. Um, you know, it's been moments where I wake up in the morning. It's like, I just don't want to do this today, but yeah. I have to, you know, so I, I go it on and in, but I mean, it's not like, it's not a joy. I can tell you that. Um, but I get it, yeah. you know, and, and we have to be out there. So we out there. If I'm not out there, then we got, you know, people out there that, that need, that need my help. So we're short. So I, I'm there. Okay. It's been rough, but yeah. it's going to get better though. It's going to get better. Let's get, I always say it takes a special person to uh, be in a position as you. I know that the ministry, the ministry is all uh, is awesome to have, especially as when you're a police officer, even in a school, mm-hmm. um, you know, at a at a mall, you know, and on the yeah. streets as well. So right. it takes a special person just to even wear that badge and just, and in the time that it is now. So uh, how do you think that this is going to last very long? with the protesting and the pandemic that's um, going on right now? Well, we, I, I don't really see an end to it no time soon. Uh, we thought this was going to end about about 30 or f- about thirty days ago. And um, every day is a new day. You know, you come to work and you think it's going to be nice and quiet. And, and before you know it, it's, it's just like, it's just everything jumps off. It's, I, I don't see an end to it anytime soon until we can come to some type of resolution. Yeah. Um, until I'm gonna move my car until um I got the sun shining in my face. Yes, go. I don't think we we can come to um. Is this better? Yes, that's fine. Actually, yeah. Um. Yeah, there you go. Your signal was kind of off. Okay. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I'm. It's like I say. It's taxing, and I'm hoping it gets better. I hope we just go to work one day, and they say, "Hey, everything's over. We everything worked out. We we came to a conclusion." And but uh, I just don't see it happening no time soon. Yeah, yeah. I know for me that I wake up every day. I mm-hmm. open my eyes. I know I'm about to pray, ask God, hey, Lord, I know that you're in control of this all. Right. Even with the protesting with the uh, with Mr. Floyd and then mm-hmm. all everything that's happened and all the shooting that's happened, all the lives that's been taken. Uh, where, where did this set on your heart? for um, everything that's happened to our black young men and women right today? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not happening just now. It's been happening forever. You know, I, got, I grew up in, yeah. I grew up in, um, in the projects, you know, and um, I've, I've come across some, some, some really salty cops and yeah. I've come across some cool cops. I came across some police officers that saved my life. They kept me out of trouble, you know? Yeah. Um, the reason I'm a school resource officer today it's because of uh, three police officers that, that took time out for me. Um, Curtis Simmons, Gerald Tuck, and Alfonso Collins. I remember them. And um, wow. and I truly believe if it had not been for those three police officers, I probably would have got caught up in the game, ripping and running the streets, because there was nothing else to do, you know? And um, so there are, you know, people say, there are no there are no good cops. That's a lie. There are good cops. Absolutely. And there are bad cops. I agree and I understand that. that, you know, that, you know, the terminology that one apple spoils a bunch. I, I get that, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can get that one apple and throw that one apple out of there so that we can have these good apples in here because Absolutely, you got yeah. some really good cops. And I'm, I can testify to that. The police officers saved, literally saved my life because the way I was coming up, the way I was coming up, I, sh- I should have been dead and gone, you know, but I'm here yeah. because of God's mercy. Yeah. <laughs> that, come on, preach faster. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I'm on the same page with you there. And that's what I say about a lot of people that say, hey, there's a lot of white 
people out here that's no good and I can attest because I live in Batesville, Arkansas and it's 95% white and I right. can attest that there are some good, good white people that's out there right. and there's right. some bad so we have to just kind of lean toward the bad ones and kind of change their heart kind of like right. and some may not want to hear but if you still pour into their heart it's going to because it's been down there it's been taught to them to be right. the way they are so right and see the thing is you, you you never hear about the good ones you know the only thing you ever hear about is something bad that happened you don't hear about the police officer that ran into the house and and pulled everybody out and then he he got half his arm burnt up you know in the fire you don't hear about that you only hear about the police officer that pulled somebody out of a car uh because he was trying to be macho you know so yeah. those ones yeah. that got hurt it's like we had two police officers that got shot during this protest and nobody's talked about it nobody's talked about it at all and these are good police officers you know one white guy one black guy and they were shot and uh and still out right now and nobody's talking about it Nobody's yeah. talking. It's not a big deal. It's only it's only about the protest because people are scared. Well, if I side with the police officer, then I'm gonna be labeled. Yeah. You know. But that's yeah. a human. That's some. That's a human. That's a human. That's police. That's somebody's dad. That's somebody's father. Yeah. You know, that's somebody's brother. You know. Somebody's son has just got shot. Acknowledge it. You know. Absolutely. You may not like his job, but acknowledge that this person has gotten shot doing a job to save people's lives. Yeah. But and the climate that we're in right now, it's like, oh, he got shot. That's a good thing. And it saddens me that, that people say that people think like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know? um, so why did you get into being a police officer? Why did you get into that field? <laughs> well, like I said, when, when I was growing up, I, um, I was in the police athletic league, which is, uh, we used to call it PAL. I was, um, I was a PAL kid and, um, yeah. they used to come pick us up, take us to water country, bush gardens and, and I just, you know, I just saw Curtis Simmons made me see police officers a different way. And I always said, you know what? When I grew up, I think I want to I want to work with the kids, too, the same way you did. However, because I grew up in the projects, I never thought for a second that they would even look at my application to be a police yeah. officer. You know, because they'd be like, oh, that's one of them male boys. We done locked up his whole family. He can't be no police officer. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I just put it off. I started working in a in a, a, a food distribution plant. Then one day I was like, I'm going to just put an application there and just see what happens. And, and then they called and I took the test and it was like, you want the job? So I'm looking around. <laughs> you asking me if I want to be a police officer? You know, are you serious? Did you all mess up? <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I, hey, it's been, it's been, it's been it's been awesome ever since, and that's why I became. I, I literally in my in interview I said I want to be a police officer because I want to give back to the youth. I want to work with the kids in the school, so I became a police officer strictly to be a school resource officer. Yeah, just and for that, that purpose. That's what I've been doing for the past twelve years. That's now awesome. they're talking about kicking us out because they don't they don't trust any of us anymore, which is sad because oh, yeah. that's where I want to be. That's the only place I want to be. I don't want to do anything else. Yeah. You know? but work with the kids, but I'm at the mercy of the people. So whatever happens, happens. I'll just let it God, let God have his way. Yeah. So do, have you encouraged any of the children uh, that you talked to, any of the young men and young ladies to become an officer? Yeah. I worked at Huguenot High School for eight years and there was about 10 graduates of Huguenot High School under my, that I was an SRO that are now Richmond police officers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it, awesome. it worked out, you know, and, um, and I'm not that type of like I work in the school. I'm not that I'm not that type of most, most. Actually, none of the school resource officers are the type where we go around like we big and bad. You know, we we really cool. Like I crack on the kids. The kids the kids crack on me. Um, they, yeah. They, you know, they talk about my big head and you know, and my <laughs> and my shoes. What are those? You know, we have those type of relationships. And but but if you're not in the school, only thing you're thinking is the school resource officer. Y'all don't need police officers in the school. Well, I'm not there to mess with the kids. I'm there to keep the kids safe and to let the kids know, hey, you can communicate yeah. with a police officer because I'm because we all the SROs, you gotta be cool anyway in order yeah. to be in this division. Because <laughs> if you're not cool, you know you can't work in the school. You oh, know Marvin, you definitely look pretty cool and look cool and everything. Right. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be cool to work in the school. Yeah, but, yeah, so, absolutely. Like I said, we, it's up to the people, you know. Hopefully we can get somebody in there with some clout to see yeah. how we operate so they'll see what a valuable resource we are to these kids. 
Yeah. So have you ever had any children when talking to them about coming a police officer have the ones that are like, man, I don't want to become, you're just, they're just traitors, you know, cops are, have you had any kids that actually talk like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All, about 95% of them. 95. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, Hey, what you going to do, man, when you graduate? It was like, I don't know. I'm like, Hey, look, you know, the police department, all, police department is always hiring. They're like, man, I ain't trying to be the ops. I ain't trying to be 12. You must be crazy. Yeah. You know, and actually one of the police officers that's now a police officer said that to me. And he went out. It was like, man, I ain't trying to be no police officer. You must be crazy. And then all of a sudden I see him in the police academy. I'm like, look at this. Look at God. <laughs> yeah, look, look at God. God. Change yeah. your life. <laughs> yeah. And my son, I asked my son too. I was like, dude, you want to be a police officer? He's like, no. I ain't trying to be no police officer, but hopefully he changed his mind too. Well, well, you talk about your kids a lot, so I know that they mean a lot to you. So, yeah. how's your relationship with your kids? Oh, good. I like. I love to embarrass my kids. Um, <laughs> um, like I said, my 16 year old, she's kind of a not an introvert. She goes in her room and shut the door. So I'll I'll open her door and throw some cold water in there or something, make her mad, and she go, she go tell my wife, you know. Um, my son hit me walking up the stairs. He'd get up and lock his door because he knew I'm about to do something real crazy. <laughs> so we had that type of relationship. They never know what to expect from me. And sometimes when they leave out of their door, I'll just open it and lock it from the inside so that they can't get back in <laughs> unless they go get a butter knife, you know. So we had we do we have a we have a really good relationship. And I just I can't be trusted. So you know, when when my when my wife hears me goes up hears me go upstairs, she'll yell out to the kids, "Your dad on the way upstairs!" <laughs> oh, awesome! <laughs> yeah, she's the warning before destruction. Yeah, <laughs> so they all run to the door and shut the door and lock them. So I just come on back downstairs and sit down. <laughs> I know, think I will lock the door too, Mervin. I will yeah, lock the door. Yeah, we got a great great relationship. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, I love that too. So I love parents that have the great relationship because I always wanted um, my 17, he's a senior now, my son to have a great relationship, not only with his father, but having mm -hmm. a great relationship with his mom. Because you know, a lot of boys tend to lean to their father and talk to them about stuff. So I definitely right. wanted my son to uh, come, to be able to come to mom and say, hey mom, yeah, yeah, yeah. about the good, the bad, son. and the ugly. Right, so my son talks to me about everything. Yeah, is your son? Some stuff. I'm like, um, man, I'm a little uncomfortable with this conversation, man. <laughs> but, yeah. but go ahead, though. What, yeah, go ahead, finish. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you know, but, so does he man, talk to his mom? If like he don't talk to me, who was? No, no, no. no. He talks to me about it. He'll, he'll, he'll see. He when he talks to me, he get down and dirty. But when he talks to her, he sugarcoat everything. Sure. You know, so. <laughs> Yeah, he's sugar coat. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. Because sometimes I feel like I'm kind of left out of the out of things. I was purposely. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Purposely. Yeah, purposely. And that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, Marvin, I thank you so much for uh, being here on the Morning Jam with your sister and your friend, Crystal Cross. You have really, truly blessed my heart. I don't want to hold you too long because I know that it is Sunday. Uh, you want to really just be with your family and love on them yeah. as you can before you return back to work. So I appreciate you. Uh, before you leave, I want you to uh, really just encourage um, my, my Facebook family here. Just encourage them on just being who you are, a minister, mm -hmm. a police officer, even encouraging words. Go ahead with that for me. Well, you know, like, you know, I... <laughs> My, my my scripture that I stand on is Philippians 4 and 13, you know, that's, you know, we can do, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And, you know, sometimes even with this, like this protest, there's been times that I've really, really, really felt defeated, you know, but I know that there's a God who sits high and looks low. So I just wait, you know what I'm saying? I just wait because I know, I know that joy is coming in the morning, you know, the Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. You said, they that wait shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They should run and not get weary and they should walk and not faint. So I just encourage you to just wait, just wait and just wait. You know, he does, he never sleeps. He never slumbers. He hears your cry. He knows your yeah. pain. He's always there and he'll never, ever, ever put more on you than you can bear. So just, just stay encouraged. You know, I, I do want to give a shout out to ba um, Baron Sorrell, God's Glory Music. He, he says, whenever I do interviews, I never bring his name up. So... I just want to give a shout out to my manager, Baron Sorrell, God's Glory Music. I did it. So it's going to be the first and last time. No, he's a good guy. Though. 
<laughs> yes, he is an awesome guy because he got you on the morning jam. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No, Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, bless his heart. He just got that New York accent. We can get rid of that New York accent. We'd be good to go. Get rid of that because we're from down south. So you got to get rid of that New York accent. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So do you want to hear just a little bit of note for us before you go? Oh, uh, let me see. Um, um, I just did. I feel like going on. I just recorded this one the other day. I was sitting in the police car. I, said, <laughs> I feel like going, going on, going on. And all the trials, they may come on every, 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 every hand. I feel like, look, you got me sitting in the convertible. <laughs> going, going on. And then I oh, usually say, you. God bless you. And, and <laughs> until we meet again. Until we meet again. So this last one, let the people know where they can connect with you on all social media. Um, if you go to my website, MervinMayo.com, everything is there. Uh, my Twitter is Mervin Mayo. My uh, uh, Instagram, my Facebook. Mervin Mail. You can get to see um, uh, I Need You, Lord, is on MervinMail.com. Just go to the store, scroll down. Um, I guess I got another song coming out. And I got an old CD that's from about 10 years ago that's really been selling for a reason. Imagine that. Uh, yeah. I think for sales now, I got 10 years ago when I put it out. But, you know, wow, God yeah. is good. I ain't going to play. This is my season, so I'm playing it. You it know? is. Your so, uh, MervinMail.com. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely, yes. Thank you, Mervin, for being on uh, the Morning Jam here with your sister and your friend, Crystal Cross. I'm definitely going to go follow you on Facebook. Make sure you hit that friend request there on there for me. Okay, Mervin? <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.